Today I wanted to show you how to build out your first integration from a flat file to salesforce.com. And for this particular example, I'm gonna be using accounts information. The purpose of showing this video is so that you will understand the different components of an integration and hopefully you can then reference this as you build your own. So I'm gonna start by connecting into the design portion of the software and I can create my project and let's just call it flat file to Salesforce. And then I'm going to start by building out one of the data sets. These are, this is one of the two main areas we're going to look at today. The first being a data set, which is a way in, of connecting into an endpoint. So we will have a flat file data set and we will have a Salesforce data set. Once we've built those two parts out, we're then going to build a map where I'm going to physically show which fields from the, the flat file will get mapped into Salesforce. And if we have time at the end, I'll also show how we could incorporate in that into our workflow. These are the three areas that you're going to be spending the most time with for most of your integrations. So if I start with the data set, let's give it And then similar to any other data set, you will select which connector you want. You'll start session. And then if there are any properties you want to set, you can do that. In this case, I want to pull in the header information. Then I'm going to browse to the flat file I want. And then I can establish connection. And at this point, this is going to pull out what we call the metadata. So it's going to pull in the information from the file, in particular the structure. It's going to pull in the header information as I specified. And so in, in this case, that's all I want to do. If you want, you can also confirm that the structure has been pulled in co correctly. This is what we call our schema. And as you can see, that's it pulling in the different fields. This is relatively straightforward, but for example, as we will see with Salesforce, you might have custom fields, you know, certain structures that you want to just make sure is getting pulled in correctly. So similar as before, I'm going to select my connector, in this case Salesforce. And then something I've already done earlier, which I think we've covered before in our admin video was to show how to set up encrypted macros. And basically this is just a, a variable where we've encrypted it so that I can store my username and my password. It also means that later on, once your integration is in production, if you just wanna go and change the, the credentials, you just need to do that in one place. So let me just set that up. start session that's connected in and as you can see it's found out that there are 165 different objects in Salesforce for my particular example I'm going to select the account object I'm going to establish connection and this is the part where it's basically making the call to Salesforce and asking for that metadata that structure of of the the account object As you can see, it's pulled in all the fields. And as I mentioned earlier, you can go to that optional third step and make sure that all the fields have come in correctly. This is good just from a testing perspective. It gives you good feedback. I'm gonna save that. So as I said, we have now two data sets, one connecting into the flat file, one connecting into Salesforce. So our next step is to create that map. So when I first create a map, it's going to walk me through a little wizard. So one option is that you could create sources 
from this point, but since we've already created them before, we can just select existing source data set, select next, and then in this case I only have the one, so I can select that in, make sure that all the fields are there, save that. Similarly, we already made our target data set for salesforce.com, so I can select that, save, and then I don't want to do any auto mapping, so I'm going to click cancel. And as you can see, both the source, flat file, and the target Salesforce object have been pulled in. And now the next step is to, to actually map fields. So I'm going to push the company information to name. I'm going to set address up to be Billing Street. City, I want to be over here. So as you can see, that's me mapping all my fields so that the map knows which fields from the, the source will get mapped to which fields in the target. The one final piece we need to set up is to tell the map when during the reading of the data, we want to move our data from the flat file to Salesforce. And the way we do that is we draw what we call an action link. So once I've done that, I can select the link. And in this case, I want to just read in every single record. So I'm going to do record started. And then for every time I read a record from the flat file, I want to output it to salesforce.com. And so in this case, I'm going to do output record. Save. And that's my integration. So I've basically designed a way to connect into the flat file, a way to connect into Salesforce, and then I've mapped up the links. Now from here, you could also, you could test it and press play and execute. But the one final piece I wanna do is to show how you would integrate this into a process. So the one final piece is to set up So in this case, I want to add in my map. I'm going to set it up to be and then I want to choose which map, which in this case I only have one. So I can save that. And then I can connect up the steps. And that means that I've got now a workflow designed with the map incorporated. As I mentioned earlier, though, you may decide that instead of pulling in a flat file from, from a disk, you might want to use something like an FTP site. So for example, you could pull in a queue and set up an FTP component. So for example, you could set that up, put in the credentials, and then once you're done with that, you would then just hook that up. And so that's you built your first integration. Thanks for watching.